How you guys doing, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, man, look, it's a happy hour. I need to hear some more happiness. How are you doing, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> word, word. Angela Puerta to the stage, please. Yeah, Angela Puerta to the stage, please. Um, so we would like to welcome you all to the uh, Greater Madison Music City Meetup and Happy Hour. Um, we just like we just want to thank y'all for being here. Um, so part of what this is really about is, you know, obviously everyone here has an appreciation for music. Um, and, and really the goal of what we're trying to accomplish is making sure that the music is reflective of everyone in this community. Um, and we want to try to get that access and that opportunity to everyone. That's why it's so important. Obviously, you all are here because you believe in community. So how can we figure out ways to make community better for everyone? Um, so, so from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you. Um, Karen? Well, thank you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, so much for coming tonight. Um, let your friends know that they can watch this on YouTube. I just put the link. Wait, I am just now putting the link on the Facebook page so they can watch this later if they weren't able to come. I just want to turn it over to our city and county friends who are critical in the success of this project. So I'll turn it over to Angela Puerta here who is with the planning department at the city of Madison. Thank you, Karen. Well, thank you everyone for coming tonight. This is definitely a pleasure and it's an honor for me to be here, uh, here before of you and represent the city of Madison as a city planner and also as a musician. That's my hobby and my, I would say my second career. And uh, the city of Madison is definitely a major supporter here with the Greater Madison Music City uh, project. So um, ever since the equity in music and entertainment report got accepted by the Common Council, we really wanted to put a lot of effort in making it happen. There are three, one recommendations that came out of that report, and we don't want that just to be a report. We want to be able to really implement um, some of those recommendations. One of the uh, biggest tasks was to uh, create a strategic plan uh, to hire a consultant firm, in this case, Sound Diplomacy, which is a great uh, music consultant uh, based in um, the UK. Uh, they also have uh, some uh, presence in the United States and they are helping us moving forward. And what you guys are going to hear tonight is about the economic impact analysis, which is just one step uh, towards the major goal, which is to find equity uh, in our entertainment so musicians can make a good living, so um, we don't have to struggle too much. Um, and, and we can always, if we are from a uh, population of color, we can be welcome and feel included within everything uh, we do regarding music. Um, so yeah, ever since we got the uh, report accepted, so Karen Wolf, major player, she's the city arts coordinator, and I wanna thank her, she's not here, she was here uh, a few minutes ago. But uh, she's a major player and she allowed me to be part of this project. Uh, so I'm very fortunate to, to, to do this. So, um, Mark and I um, have been the leaders of the Tourism Music Hub Committee, which is an important committee. Um, because what we want is to um, identify what makes us unique. And even if we don't have anything that makes us unique, can we create something that really represents Madison so we can bring visitors to our community, we can make, I mean, let's be honest, we can make money and be able to, to, to boost. Yeah, you can clap for that, yes. make money. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make money. Um, and, um, and, and this is just a, a one, one of the pieces of the big puzzle of this Greater Madison Music City project we have other subcommittees and, and we're very lucky to be able to have the guidance of the great, this great leader, Karen Reese uh, from UCAN. <laughs> and, and, and Rob Dees, who just made this mad lit event. Yes. <laughs> you know, someone who can represent us now with this huge event, which is mad lit on State Street. 
uh, for the first time, we can see a lot of people of color uh, in the downtown and State Street dancing. Uh, we have other festivals, yes, I, I know, but this one really represents uh, the intention that came out of the, uh, the report. So um, thank you so much for being here. I don't wanna take too much of the time, but um, I'm very fortunate and I'm gonna uh, pass it over to Mark, who has been an essential uh, player um, so we can move forward with this. I um, have never initiative. been called a player, but thank you very <laughs> much. Uh, I'll stand in for Joe Parisi, he couldn't be here, uh, but thank you very much. Uh, we're, this is very exciting because it's really about the economic impact of the creative economy. Uh, the music industry in particular is the lead of this. Certainly we know in our research that about $250 million goes right back into the local economy through arts and culture. That means you all who play music, you all who create art, are part of that economic impact driver that really determines who we are as a community. And we're more than just the economy. We're also creative. We're also about culture, uh, uh, creativity, and community. And that's a big part of what we're trying to achieve here. But we can't do it alone. We've been meeting weekly for the past year, and for some of us, even a couple years meeting to discuss how we create an economic ecosystem of music that represents who we are as a people. And as you know, with everything going on, we need to be greater at coming together, and we think music can do that. Um, but it's the first leg of not only just music, but I'm also talking about the other disciplines, theater, dance, performance, literary, visual, you know, all those other disciplines that have an impact on who we are as a community. So we really think uh, this could be uh, monumental in terms of how the, c the community, the city of Madison, and me representing Dane County, have a greater representation of who we are as a people so that people get pay paid fair wage for their work as musicians. I have never negotiated my plumber. Yeah. You know, right. I've never yeah. negotiated my financial advisor, my banker, my lawyer, my name it, but we as artists are always negotiating and we gotta stop that. And I think we can stop that if together we come together and show the impact that we have visually through our data that we're researching and collecting and have that impact that people can stand up and say, you as a venue should make money, but we as artists should also make money. Because when I go to the grocery store, and this is my, fan, my line, I go to the grocery store, you can't buy groceries with passion. They want your cash. Yeah, give it up for that. All of us need to make cash. You know, we need to hold those venues accountable for who we are. We just did a million dollar program to represent artists in the community that were impacted by COVID. Came from the federal government, it came from the state, came down to the county and finally trickled down to Dane Arts with a million dollars, went to 400 artists received $2,500 just to, just to make up what happened in 2020 with no jobs, no gigs. Because if you're a musician or an artist, your second or third job is the service industry. And the th industries that have been impacted most by COVID are the arts and the service industry. So $2,500 may not seem like a lot, and it really isn't in the bigger scheme of things, but it was enough to at least help a lot of artists who are, Yay! right, right who are our bread and butter. So what were you doing during COVID? Did anybody stream? Anybody listen to music? Anybody dance? Anybody read? Any, yeah, it was the arts. It wasn't my financial advisor. It wasn't my lawyer <laughs> that made me through this. Whatever. They helped, but I didn't go to them. I went to the arts for my soul and my spirit. And that's what this is about. So just help us really create a dynamic outcome for this study that we're doing with Sound Diplomacy so that we can have the data because everybody I know in the funding world wants data. They don't give a shit about your music necessarily <laughs> or your art. They want to see the hard numbers. So help us collect the hard numbers, fill out that sheet, let us get a sense of who we are as a community, and together all of us can really have the impact that we really want to have and the outcome. This is not going to be cheap. We're raising money, and money is really important to raise for this, but we think we can have an answer to how we address equity and fairness in our community through music and then theater, dance, film, and the other disciplinary arts that really make who we are as a people. So like I say, the arts heal, the arts build community, and the arts save lives. So let's do it together. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mark, all of that. I'm <laughs> hey, but seriously, can I give a really quick shout out? Got to give a shout out to David Boy and Carol Schaefer, other yeah. members of the Greater Madison Music City Committee. Um, Augusta Brula. So yeah, man, big ups. 
yeah. Mr. Gaines in the back, member of one of our, one of our groups. So we have four uh, different groups that we have could take a part of it, and it's artists and equity relations, um, also business and partnerships, uh, economic impact, and as, as Angela pointed out, the tourism idea of it. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Yeah, thank you for everyone. If you're here and you're on one of the work groups, could you please raise your hand? Give it up for the people who are already starting this work. AK and Conkle. Thank you yeah, so definitely. much. And give it up for the sound, because there's no yeah. reverb, there's nothing. It's, Thank it's you beautiful. so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the technical component is so critical to all our work, so thank you. I do want to take one moment before we get into the data, which I so much, so love, just to acknowledge a member of our committee who recently passed away, Walter Jankowski. Um, he was well known in the business world, a savvy consultant, a really fun guy to be around, and a wild proponent of the arts. And um, last week he passed away far too soon and we're gonna really feel his loss on this committee and many of you will out there. So if you could just raise your glass and just give a toast to Walter. Skippy. 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 <laughs> Thank you. All right, so. My name is Karen Reese. I'm the president of Urban Community Dr. Arts Karen Network. Dr. Karen Reese. Oh, Dr. Karen. <laughs> president. <laughs> Urban Community Arts Network, also known as UCAN, and we've been around for about 10 years in the Madison community. I'm born and raised in Madison, always been a local music fan, and really excited to be in a place to try to help make it more equitable in Madison for musicians. And the grand theme here is to help you all make money. And we shouldn't feel bad about that. We need to make money, right? You got bills to pay, you gotta feed your kids, all that stuff. So over the years, we've met with various city officials, talking to other artists in the area, trying to figure out how do we make changes on the grand scale. And we primarily started focusing on the hip hop genre because that was primarily uh, black artists. And um, black artists and hip hop artists are really excluded from our mainstream stages. We have one black owned bar in all of Madison, which we're in right now. So that's great, but we should have a lot more of those. So how can we change the landscape on that? So that's really what we're fighting for. In um, 2017, 2018, we did a task force that was um, elected or a resolution passed by the city of Madison Common Council to do a task force on equity in music and entertainment. And so a group of people met for about a year and a half and really looked at the issues and came up with a report with about 31 recommendations in that. The Common Council accepted that report. There's two options, accept and adopt. Adopt means they have some legislative responsibility to do something about it. Accept means like, you wrote a report. Not even like good, just you wrote a report. <laughs> so we were thrilled that it was accepted, but obviously we want it to go much farther. Um, and so Angela and Mark have both been working really hard and Karen Wolf have been working really hard to try to make some of those policy changes happen on the government level. But we know that we really need community to keep pushing on this because we gotta hold our elected officials accountable for what they said they were gonna do. And that's what this is about. So one of the recommendations was to hire a consultant to help us work on this. Because if this was something that we, we've got tons of local expertise, people who really know what they're doing, who know the scene, who know the community. But if we could have solved this problem by ourselves, we would have done it by now. So we need to pull all of the resources we can together and we need to pull all of ourselves together. That's probably the most important part for us to really make this change. So we hired uh, the consultants that Angela was talking about, Sound Diplomacy, who work, that all they do is think about music cities. How do you make your, mu your city more equitable for musicians and help you build an infrastructure so that musicians can get paid, and which benefits us all. Um, and so we've gotten the first phase of that work uh, past us right now, which is the reason we're throwing this event is to share the results with you of our economic impact report. Coming up later in the year, probably early 2022, we'll also have a comparative analysis, which is gonna look at Madison compared to other cities that are you know, similar to us, college towns, by demographics, what have you. And then we'll also have a deep dive into regulatory and policy analysis and what we need to change so that we can have what you all have been fighting for for so long. So 
Um, there are some one sheets around the room that have just a few highlights from the report, and there are about four copies of the four full report in the room if you want to page through that. The report is also available now at greatermadisonmusiccity.com. What's so that site? What's that website? greatermadisonmusiccity.com. greatermadisonmusiccity.com. <laughs> that one. So you can read the whole thing if you're into that sort of thing, or um, you can listen to us, and then we'll be posting some infographics over the next few weeks so that you can get it that way. Um, so, so just a little bit about the Greater Madison Music City Project. So again, an extension of the work that UCAN has been doing, an extension of the work that was done on the task force. Um, and we're really a group of people from around the city, musicians, artists, private business owners, um, government, um, people involved in government. Um, and we really need multi-sector to make this happen, just talking about what we need to do to get this done. Um, also working on fundraising, because again, the theme of the night is money. And, you know, we got to make sure that we're paying people to do this work and paying people to do these kinds of events and so on. So we've recently formed um, four subcommittees, four work groups to focus on some key areas. And those work groups are Tourism and Music Hub, which Angela and Mark are chairing. We have Equity and Artist Relations, chaired by Rob here. Um, partnerships and Business Connections, um, chaired by Carol Schaefer in the room and uh, Rob Gard, who's here tonight or was here. Still here, Rob? Yay, there he is. Um, and then also e Economic Impact, which is chaired by Nick, and I forgot to ask him how I actually say his last name. Pivich. Nick Pivich, who so graciously stepped up in the chair role, um, and I'll be looking at. And these work groups, we'll be publishing the, the rosters on our website soon, but they really are people from a broad cross-section of the city. We focused on making sure that we had artists of color and black artists and other representatives on these teams, not just dominated by the usual people that we see in places of power, people that already have access. Now, of course, we also need the people who have access and power in these spaces because we need that access, right? So we're working on keeping those groups balanced, and we will always push in this project. Equity is the number one focus. So one of the things that happens, you all know it, when we have these task force, commissions, studies, whatever, we might start out with good intentions, but at the end of the day, the reports generally talk about what the mainstream wants, or um, you know, the recommendations are great, but we don't actually put money behind it. We're here to tell you that um, we're not stopping this until it's done. So it takes forever. I mean, UCAN has been doing this for 10 years, and we're still doing it. So just know that if you invest time and energy in this, your time is going to be well worth it. So I just wanted to give you a, yeah, thanks. So just a couple of highlights here. Um, I don't think there were any, I guess the one big surprise for me was that when we're looking at the music industry here, we're not just looking at artists, we're not just looking at bars who book artists or restaurants, we're looking at all of the careers that are affected by music, right? This is our music ecosystem. These are people who come to the book hotels for festivals. These are our studio engineers, our PR people, our producers, um, people who write, people who manage, um, the restaurant that you go to after the show, all of those things are part of our music economy. And so when we include all of those things and really look at it, we have over a half a billion, um, almost, almost half a billion dollars in our music ecosystem. So this is more than just having a fun night out. This is driving a lot of what's going on in our city, and this is keeping our city healthy. So like Mark said, you know, the, the music is keeping us healthy. It's saving us. Um, it's not just about our mental health. This is about all of us, everyone making money. And so we need to treat it like, it, like it's important because it is. Um, and, and many of those venues that are holding these events are not impacted by the restaurants that are receiving money, by the child care, by the parking fees. Right. There's an economic impact beyond just the industry itself. You know, our research shows that there are 9,584 full-time equivalent positions in the arts here in Dane County, whether it's full-time, part-time, or quarter-time. We are an economic driver. If you go to an event here in Dane County, you pay for a ticket. If you go to, let's say, the Willie Nelson concert next week, next Friday night, you know, you go to that, it's going to be packed. But people are driving, paying money for gas, paying money for parking, paying money for hotels. 
food, has nothing to do with that event. That's the hands that we have and the impact that we have and the authority that we should be expressing as artists here in Dane County. Yeah. We're, not, we're not a hobby. Nope. You know, we're not a, what do we call a frill? I looked up frill one day and it said it's a part of cloth that hangs over a table. That's a piece of art. So maybe we are a frill. <laughs> I mean, and to that point, you know, we've got 59% of jobs um, that are supported by live music alone in this in the city. That's a very high percentage. Um, we've got 42% of, if we look at indirect effect of music, 42% um, of the music ecosystem in Dane County is uh, on the information sector. So not the bars, but the people who are in the studios and broadcasting and all those sort of Careers, you wouldn't you wouldn't guess that, right? But that's where a lot of this traffic is going. Now, a couple of things that probably don't surprise us are when we really disaggregate by the demographics. Um, the music ecosystem is actually um, almost half and half. It, and obviously, the our current systems of data only really take into account binary genders. So. I'll say right now, one of the things that we noticed in putting together this report is there's a lot of holes in the way we collect data that not only includes gender, but also an ethnicity. Um, if you read the report, you'll notice that Latinx, Hispanic ethnicity was not included in the numbers because they weren't there in enough of um, a power to make it significant. Because we were working two or three jobs. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. So, so we, we've got a lot of work to do there, and we'll be focusing on that. I mean, that's my research background, is making sure that we're collecting data the right way so that we, if we ask for the data, we get what we need to know. Um, but what we do see is, even though it's about half and half of the jobs in our music ecosystem, women and men, um, still we have 60% of men in managerial positions. So we still have a disproportionality of men who are doing the leadership supervisory work. Perhaps not surprisingly, white identified people in the music industry earn 122% more than black or African Americans and 136% more than Asian workers in the rest of the economy. Um, we see this disparity, but it's not, it's, it's still that extreme. So what we see across Dane County racially is also happening in the music industry. Now, one thing here to pay attention to is the difference between what we might call formal and informal structures. So if these data systems are taking reports from like restaurants or companies that are reporting, what we're missing is all of the informal, I don't think it's informal, but the networks that don't get counted by these data sources, the deals that you're making right now, the agreements that you're making, the collabs you're putting together right now are not necessarily reflected in this data source. And so there's even more power in the system than the powers that be can put on paper. So it's so important for us to keep pushing this work forward. Um, so go ahead and read the report, pay attention to our social media. We are on Facebook at Our GMMC, also Instagram, Our O-U-R GMMC. To keep up on this, you can also follow Urban Community Arts Network, that's U-C-A-N and Madison, you can Madison, for all this information. Um, I want to let us get back to the actual music, because we talked kind of a long time. <laughs> but does anyone have, we can make, take maybe two or three questions. It's okay, about good. opportunity and access. Economics plays a part in it, but it's about yeah, go opportunity ahead, Joey. and access. Okay. So the question by Joey Remedy Born Music is, are we looking for food donations to music events? And I'm sure, yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, Joey has done wonders at our events with delicious food donations, and we really appreciate it. Today, however, we did have to give you the COVID-friendly food options, individually wrapped. Please eat that stuff and take it home with you. It's all gluten-free, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I put all my money in gluten, Yeah. and now it's gluten-free. Sorry. No, it's all gluten and carb-filled. And if you don't grab Any some other chips? questions? Um, I'm going to have to double check that how much that went into these numbers because that's an excellent question and we know that oftentimes comedy and music are put together so I'm going to get back to you on that and I'm also going to ask our consultants about how they work with that in the area. Yeah, at the back.
Yeah, so the question is, um, he's heard some of the uh, bars downtown will take hip hop off the jukebox, not just downtown, this happens a lot of places. Certain alcohols, Hennessy, Tang, I drink Tanker 8s, sometimes missing, it's very disappointing. Um, but <laughs> what's important here is yes, that happens often, and we go through waves in the city where that happens. The Task Force on Equity in Music and Entertainment dealt with some of that, so um, that is also available on UCAN's website, ucanmadison.org, ucanmadison.org, ucan.org. Um, you can check out that report, but it really is about um, bringing awareness to this equity issue, not blaming it under the guise of public safety, because it's not, and making sure that it's not disguised as being about hip hop, because it's not, and it's about Madison and Dayton County's fear of black and brown people concentrated in an area, which is ridiculous. So that's really what that task force report focused on. I don't have any groundbreaking things to report, but that is one of the big things that we are keeping front and center in this greater Madison Music City work because we can't keep going on like this. It's, it's, not, it's not okay. No white tees and saggy jeans. <laughs> yeah, Carol. Yeah, great point, Carol. So Carol mentioned that when we look at sound diplomacy study, while they always include an equity component, we're the first community who's making that front and center as the most important thing that we're looking at. So, you know, like I said before, this is something that in a lot of city county committees um, will kind of get a nod to equity, but it still ends up being that table of all white people that are trying to guess what the issues are. And then the problem, it never changes, right? Year after year, and we got all these reports and millions of dollars on the shelf, nothing's happening. So we're, you know, it, it, we've moved slower probably than other areas because we need to move at a pace that will allow us to keep that at the front. Now that also means that we need to get the word out as much as possible so people who need to know about this know about this. And um, like I said, when you see the people who are on our work groups, um, hopefully you can see that we're really making effort for that. And this is also always open for anyone that wants to get involved. Um, there's a lot of work to be done here and we can always use all hands on deck. So as people want to get involved, you can also find contact forms on greatermadisonmusiccity.com and on our social media. Um, so hit us up and let us know if you want to be involved, you can. Even if that just means being on the email list to keep up and you have an occasional thought you want to send to us, like do that because we need you all. So, all right, with that, I'll end the talking portion of tonight so that we can get to the good music part of it. Oh. Yo. He started it, but okay. Yo. <laughs> what? I'm, what? He's our Last I word, Rob. Last word, bucks and six. Spits. 